This is EE2900, week 6, lecture 2. Lecture 1 was your first exam. Uh, today we're going to start chapter 5, which is basically, I would say, arithmetic circuits. Okay, This most likely represents, quote-unquote, the last part of your course in the sense, so far, uh, recall what we have done, just to give a kind of like a recap. Number one, we started with the number systems, actually. So we'll review that uh, so in this lecture. So this is the positional numbering number systems. Second, we did uh, Boolean algebra. Then we did CMOS to understand basically some ideas such as propagation delay, primarily uh, the expression CV squared F as the power dissipation, so the power CMOS dynamic, which you should not forget, is CV squared times the switching frequency. Okay. Uh, let's see. Propagation delay. Then we did ideas such as uh, noise margins, fan out, etc. So when we did VHDL, under this I'll put uh, structural, behavioral, uh, but also stuff like uh, decoders, oh, oops, multiplexers, I mean this is technically a part of Boolean Algebra. So MUXs under the Boolean Algebra, we did K-maps, for example, MUXs, decoders, etc. Okay. So if you actually look in your syllabus, we we we're supposed to cover MUX's decoders towards the end of the course. We already did that. So this gives us, actually, this is actually good because it gives us more time to practice. So, and it's all going to be now. Uh, so right, what we're going to do is now we're going to do arithmetic circuits. So this is actually going to be more practice. So next lecture, what I'll do is I'll give, next lecture is your schedule for VHCL representative of numbers. Uh, so we will also look at Modelson. The circuit simulation tool so you should bring your laptops with you and make sure models is installed however in lecture we will not really be going through a step-by-step -step intro to models and we might do that in lab but I want to take this time that is I want to take the uh, 2100 to familiarize you to familiarize you with uh, digital logic simulation and the industry standard simulation tool is model sim it's not really hard to use uh, I'm of the opinion that if you understand what you're doing, it's not hard to use. Okay. So anyway, that's next lecture, but let's get into arithmetic circuit. So let's again recall the positional numbering system. So this should be a review of positional numbering system in the sense that an integer such as 37 can be represented by a place value and a face value, where the place value here is the tens digit, the face value is three, for example. Um, but anyway, let's look at uh, base 10 integers, and I'm just going to stick to binary, the sense if I have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 uh, in binary. This will give me given 0, 0, um, let's do 0 through 7, because that's actually enough for what we want to do. 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and we did cover the first week of the course, how to convert between different uh, bases. So this is base 2, okay. So as a quick uh, example, uh, let's do, for example, 1, 1, 0 in base 2 is going to be 1 times 2 squared plus 1 times 2 to the 1 plus 0 times 2 to the 0 so that's 4, 5, 6 so which is 6 in base 10 and to go from base 1 base to the other we follow the inverse operation so let's do for example 3 uh, the quotient when 3 is divided by 2 is 1 the remainder is 1 the quotient when 2 is divided by or one, when 1 is divided by 2 is 0 the remainder is 1 and again, we looked at, so this is the least significant bit. Therefore, 
3 base 10 is 0, 1, 1, and then 2, 0, 0. So we stop 0, 0, 1, 1, or 1, 1 in base 2. Okay, so we did all this the very first week. Just a quick review. Uh, let me move this down. So 3 in base 10 is 1, 1 in base 2. But now a natural question that we'll ask is how do we extend? So the question is how do we extend first uh, by base 2 or how do we extend base 2 to encode negative numbers okay so again this was just a review so we're starting arithmetic circuits per se. So the answer is there are actually many ways in the sense let's l l argue about this logically or let's think about this logically. So here is uh, base 10 but now we have signed okay so it's positive and negative but then let's do 0 1 2 3 Uh, let's do this. Let's do it this way. Base. Let's try with base two signed. Okay. So in other words, zero zero zero. Let's do three bits. Zero zero one. Uh, three bits. Base two signed. Zero zero one 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 zero zero one zero one 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 zero one one one. And the corresponding base ten representation as a first shot as an engineer, what you would probably do. This is called sign magnitude. You would basically use the most significant bit, for example, as a sign bit. A lot like writing like a plus sign when it's zero and then minus sign when it's one. So this would translate into zero, one, two, three, negative zero, negative one, negative two, negative three. And you can immediately see the disadvantage of this in the sense you basically have two representations for zero. So any hardware circuit you design must take this fact into account right so sign magnitude quickly fell out of vogue if you will for representing negative integers however sign magnitude is still used for example in floating point so let's try again base 10 one's complement that is uh, we let me do this I need to the room. So let's call this sine magnitude. Okay. So in other words, this as you will see is still standard, but then we define the complement of this as the negative. So again, you will see the problem that then this will become negative zero. This still doesn't solve our problem. This is negative one, this is negative two, this is negative three. Okay. However, now what we can do is in order to remove the negative zero. What we can do is we can say we have a two's complement, which is basically defined as one's complement plus one. All right. So let's try this. So this is still the same zero, one, two, three, but then the two's complement representation of one would be well. 110, sorry, 111, yes, because the ones complement of uh, 1 is 110, but 2's complement is different as 1's complement plus 1. So, in other words, 111 will become our negative 1. Similarly, if you take the 1's complement of 010, which would be 1, 
0, 1, and add 1, you get 1, 1, 0. So this will become negative 2, this will become negative 3. So we are free to choose this. So free to choose because the beauty of this is as as you saw the way we are doing this, uh, I complemented this 1, 1, 0, added 1, I got 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, I complemented, I got 1, 0, 1, added 1, 1, 1, 0, and then uh, 0, 1, 1 became 1, 0, 0, complement, plus 1, 1, 0, 1, perfect. Now, if you notice, the ones, the two's complement of 1, 0, 0 is going to be 1's complement, 0, 1, 1, plus 1, which is 1, 0, 0. So it's itself. Now, what about this guy? We still left out this guy. Well, again, the 1's complement of this is 1, 1, 1, plus 1 will be 1, 0, 0, 0, but we're using only 3 bits. So in essence, the 0 remains unchanged, and we're free to choose this. So we will define this as negative 4 for obvious reasons okay so basically the points to note are number one two's complement is pretty much is the standard so in VHDL is also used used to represent negative integers okay that's number one number two two's complement is defined as one's complement plus one and of course this works both ways in the sense the two for example let's take the two's complement of negative two we should get positive two so you get zero zero one one's complement plus one zero one zero you get positive two and vice versa okay second the range of integers that can be i mean that's second third can be represented using n bits two's complement is going to be 2 to the n minus 1. So again, if you forget this expression, just generate this table. Right? This will tell you everything we need. Here, n is 3. So it's going to be 2 to the n minus 1. So it will be 2, two squared, which is 4, minus 1. This is the most positive number we can get. That's 3. However, the negative number is going to be simply 2 to the n minus negative 2 to the n minus 1. And if you check the total number, so this is going to be what we said, uh, n is 3. So let me just write this out. If n equals 3, the range is given by negative 2 squared to 2 squared minus 1, which is negative 4 to 3. Okay, uh, That's what we observed here. But notice that we have a total of 3 minus minus 4 plus 1, 8 numbers, which I mean, that's all you got. You can store 8 numbers or 8 stuff with 3 bits. Yeah. So that works out uh, very nicely. So now what we will do is we'll look at an example of... Uh, sub, uh, subtractor. So let's do a two bit subtractor design. Okay. Recall that we did, and we'll do this. I mean, this is going to be structural, obviously, we're going to use Boolean algebra. But recall, like a couple of lectures ago, we did a two bit adder. So now we're going to do a two bit subtractor. So let me go on to the next page. So basically, actually, let me just do this here because I don't want to waste paper, <laughs> tablet paper. So in the solution, uh, we will utilize 
the fact that subtraction can be implemented as so the difference is let's say x minus y where x and y are two bits but this is x plus negative y which is x plus y bar plus one so we're assuming two's complement okay So, in other words, I'm just going to write over the truth table. So, we want to do x minus y. So, we're going to get x1, x0 as usual, y1, y0. Okay, let's fill out the truth table 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, and now I gotta pull my zoom out trick. Okay. One one zero zero. Let me do the groupings of four to make sure I didn't screw up. Eight four. 1101 okay what do I screw up okay so I didn't group it by four I grouped it by three here that's where I screwed up so right there sorry it's getting late when I'm recording this lecture so there is that So now what I'm going to do is I'm just like we did the adder, I'm going to define the difference digits and use this expression and fill out the output. So let me pause the lecture. We have only like three more minutes anyway to hit the 20 minute mark or two and a half minutes or whatever. So let me fill it out. We'll discuss it and that will wrap up this lecture. All right. I'll be back. Okay. Continuing. So this takes a little bit of time. You got to be careful. So what I've done here is I have indicated what is the two-bit complement integer using two's complement. What is the integer representation of these two-bit numbers? And notice that the range of integers that can be represented for the input is minus two to the two minus one, which is minus two to two to the two minus one minus one, which is one. Excuse me. Now with three bits. The range of integers that can be represented is minus 4 to 3 because we just worked on it over here. However, you will notice that as I completed this table, there are some little nuances that our algorithm has to follow. And I recommend you try this and check this. However, a more elegant solution is to what is called sign extent. That is, for example, here is negative 2 in 2 bit. Uh, uh, two bit two's complement. So if you go to if you want to make that three bits, you just sign extend this most significant bit by adding a one, and that's what exactly it is over here, right? So we sign extend both this and minus one will become one one one, and then we carry out x plus y bar plus one, and as you can see, minus one in three bit two's complement is one one one. Now, if you want to sign extend a positive number, apparent obviously you just keep on appending or appending to the most significant bits, the zero. But anyway, this is how you would design an arithmetic circuit using structural, let's say VHDL. However, starting in next lecture, we will see how to do a behavioral specification of this, and you will see that it's a lot, lot more easier. Okay, see you next lecture.